The Senate narrowly voted to strip Biden of his authority to mandate vaccines. So Biden doesn't have the power, according to the U.S. Senate, to save lives by mandating vaccines. However, they do believe that he should have the power and authority to sell Saudi Arabia weapons that they will almost certainly use against innocent civilians in Yemen. So according to the U.S. Senate, can't save lives. But you can take lives. That's what they approve of with regard to Biden's executive power. Now, one Democrat in particular, Chris Murphy, has done a 180 seemingly for partisan reasons because he once thought that the president shouldn't have the power to sell Saudi Arabia weapons while they're carrying out a genocide against the Yemeni people. But now, all of a sudden, that Biden is in control. It's a different story. So Sarah Sirota and Austin Allman of The Intercept report, the Senate tonight voted 67 to 30 against the resolution to ban a 650 million air-to-air -air missile sale to Saudi Arabia approved by the State Department. The resolution was introduced last month by Senators Rand Paul, Bernie Sanders, and Mike Lee. A message needs to be sent to Saudi Arabia that we don't approve of their war in Yemen, Paul said at the time. By participating in this sale, we would not only be rewarding reprehensible behavior, but also exacerbating a humanitarian crisis in Yemen. Senator Chris Murphy, who partnered with Sanders and Lee in November of 2018 to invoke the 1973 War Powers Resolution to prohibit U.S. participation in the Saudi bombing offensive in Yemen, notably didn't back his colleagues in this latest effort. His vote of opposition represents a significant shift for Murphy, who claimed in an email to The Intercept last month explaining his support of the sale, I have been the leading critic of Saudi Arabia's war in Yemen. Quote, this is a true defensive weapon sale, he told The Intercept ahead of the vote. Murphy, who led reforms to exert congressional oversight of the White House during the Trump administration, claimed that the power to use AMRAM sale as leverage should rest with Biden. I don't think Congress should take that ability away from the president, he said. I think the president should have this sale and be able to use it in discussions with the Saudis about their policy going forward. So this is an incredibly disingenuous and hacky argument. Now, uh, basically, his argument for why we should give these weapons to Saudi Arabia is because it is defensive. Because, you know, Saudi Arabia needs to have the capability to shoot down Houthi drones. Except everybody knows these are inevitably going to be used against Yemeni civilians. You can't guarantee that Saudi Arabia is going to use these defensively. You just have to take the word of this lion bloodthirsty regime. So will you come out, Chris Murphy, and apologize when we ultimately find out that these weapons were indeed used against Yemeni civilians? Will you apologize when you find out that these weapons that you're agreeing to give to them are used in their blockade of Yemeni ports? I mean, this is catastrophic, and yet you're you're agreeing to this. So it's it's <laughs> It's predictable, but frustratingly so. The Senate is comprised of a bunch of fucking maniacs. Again, let me just put things into perspective for you in terms of the United States' priorities here. Saving lives by man mandating vaccines, horrible. Taking lives by giving weapons to Saudi Arabia, which you know will be used against civilians, fine. It's just, it's a, uh, it's a joke. Now, I want to share a clip from Rand Paul and Bernie Sanders. I do not like Rand Paul, but love him or hate him, what he says here is absolutely correct. And what Bernie Sanders says with additional data and, and facts about this situation is absolutely necessary for every single person to hear so they find out how egregious this is. And we are complicit. We are arming the Saudis and allowing this to happen. Offensive, defensive, they shouldn't get any of our weapons. We should stop selling them any weapons until they stop starving the country of Yemen. President, I, I find myself in the somewhat uncomfortable and unusual uh, position uh, of agreeing with Senator Paul. The understanding that it is Congress that has the constitutional responsibility to authorize war, not the president, should in fact transcend partisan disagreements. As the Saudi government continues to wage its devastating war in Yemen and repress its own people, we should not be rewarding them with more arms sales. We should be demanding that they end the devastating war in Yemen, which has killed over 230,000 people in one of the very poorest countries on earth. For more than six years, 
The Saudi-led military intervention in Yemen's civil war has been a key driver of the largest humanitarian disaster in the world, the largest. According to UNICEF, four out of every five children in Yemen needs humanitarian assistance. That is over 11 million children. 400,000 children suffer from severe malnutrition. 1.7 million children have been displaced from their homes by violence from this war. And some 15 million people more than half of whom are children, do not have access to safe water, sanitation, or hygiene. Mr. President, my simple question is, why in the world would the United States reward such a regime which has caused such pain in Yemen with more weapons? My friends, the answer is we should not. So they're both absolutely correct. This is a test of morality. It shouldn't be a partisan issue. This should be a human issue. Saudi Arabia is an absolutely brutal, bloodthirsty regime, regime that doesn't care at all about human rights. So for you to agree to give them weapons, I mean, how do you sleep at night? I, I just, I don't know how you're able to live with yourself knowing that what you're doing is enabling a regime that will ultimately do violence against innocent civilians. It's truly morally reprehensible, but these folks, they have no moral conscience in the Senate. They just, they don't care. They couldn't care less. Now, you know, uh, I bring up this weird double standard where saving lives, according to the Senate, is bad, but taking lives is fine with them. Uh, but what's interesting is that like people uh, such as Rand Paul, you know that he voted against the vaccine mandate. Uh, so he's going to preach all high and mighty here about the need to save lives. And he's correct about that. But also he doesn't apply that to the vaccine mandate, which specifically will save GOP lives because they're the ones who are the most vaccine hesitant. And same like Chris Murphy. Chris Murphy, who I ripped on in this video, rightfully so, is against, uh, you know, limiting Biden's authority to sell this uh, weapons, uh, these weapons to Saudi Arabia. But he probably supported the vaccine uh, mandate. So it's just... <sighs> There's no consistency here. There's no real respect for hu humanity and, and human lives. And, you know, it's, it's frustrating. But nonetheless, it, it's totally, totally predictable at this point.